Hey folks, how you doing? Long time no see. Uh, it's actually a dry day. Well, no rain yet. We've got a storm coming in, so I'm at uh, Bob Minton Petrox Church. Um, I've got to go into town to get someone, so I thought I'd do a video while I was passing. So here's a few. Mary, the wife of Walter Hicks, late of Lower Boscarn. So that'll be Boscorn and Stalin. Departed this life uh, on the whatever I can't see because they've piled the stones here. 8th of December 1841, aged 42 years. That's Hicks. Here we have Alfred, the son of Sam and Sandra, son of Samuel and Sandra. Sandy Weber of this borough died on the fifth day of February, 1855, aged two years old. Oh, blimey, a young child. Little Alfred. So that's Weber in 1855. That's a shame here because there's a lot of rubbish as you can see. Some sort of radio there. Here we have John Pierce with an S, son of George Pierce and Susan Pierce. Who was born April the 8th, 1811, and died May the 3rd, 1833. That's Pierce with an S. There's Pierce's with a C and S in Cornwall and sometimes in the same sort of town as well. I went to one uh, churchyard and they were, both names were there. Here we have Thomas Bryant. Departed this life on the 20th day of December 18, 1836. Aged 78. Also in memory of his wife. She died on the 22nd of September 1808, age 40. That's Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T. You have Richard Dodge, Richard Dodge Phillips. Of this borough innkeeper. Okay. Innkeeper who died the fourteenth of April, eighteen forty six, aged thirty nine years. Richard, that's Phillips, Richard Dodge Phillips. Innkeeper, that's interesting. And here we have Thomas West, FRCS, son of the late Reverend Thomas West, vicar of Vicar of that says Gifford. I don't know what that means. What's that say? Is that an H? Love here, Gifford, I don't know. Devon, oh, okay. Here, Gifford, Devon. Died November 1848, aged 71 years. So that's ironic that we got an innkeeper next to a vicar's son. 
Right, moving on. Joshua Hawkin. He departed this life on the 20th day of July, 1854, aged 29. Lots of Hawkins. There's Hawkings as well. Right, here we have Eldred, the son of Charles and Eliza Pierce. Again with an S. Of this borough. Died in 1839, aged 13 months. Oh. Also William Thomas is that Popsham. Popsham is that? Their son who died May 1815, aged 13 months. Also Louisa. Louisa Courtney. Borage, Ballage. As that say, sister of Eliza Pierce, who died February 20th, 1845, aged 15 years. That's a sad grave. A little nice name, Eldred. Never heard of that before. It's William Thomas Popsham and Louisa Courtney, sister of Eliza Pierce. Moving on here, Gaskin. Marianne Gaskin, wife of John Gaskin and daughter of Walter and Mary Langford of Liscard, which is about eight miles from here, who died in the year of a Lord, 1840, aged 34 years. Also, Richard Langford Gaskin, their infant son, who died March, 1839, aged 11 months. Now, that's a shame. Here we have Richard Oliver, Abigail, his wife, and Hannah, Amelia Squire, and their grandchildren, Fanny Walker Oliver, Elizabeth Oliver, Charles Gross Oliver. Sorry about the sirens in behind. Elizabeth, the wife of Joseph Varco of Rutherham. Well, that's out where I live, in the countryside. Um, she died in November 1847, age 46. And also of Jane, their daughter, who died at Bodmin, 1858, age 22. Her end was peace. Here we have one that's out of the way a bit. Honor, Honor Keat, K E A T E, of the town of Padstow in this county, who departed this life on the 11th day of October 1817, age 82, 1847. Sorry, I think it says 18. No, I was right, 18, yeah, 1847. Yeah, Keat with an E, K-E-A-T-E, -E. Honor. She's from Pad, she was from Padstow then. That's a long, long way from here. Unusual how she got buried over here. Possibly married a local guy, I suppose. George Travartin who died on the 17th day of December 1849, age 67. Also Grace, wife of the above, who died on the 15th day of February 1860, aged 83. 
Also William Henry, son of the above, who died on the 18th day of May 1825, aged one year and six months. Oh, bless him. We've got all these at the back here. Some, so there's a lot of stones here have been just piled on top of each other. Can't even read some of them. I'm watching where I step in because there could be needles here. And Alfred, uh, yeah, the top of the stone's gone. Bugger. Departed this life on the 17th day of March. 1836, aged 16 years. Also, Anne Elford Hicks, daughter of the above, died in February 1840, aged eight years. I don't know where the top of that grave's gone then. Here we have Thomas Moyle. Thomas Moyle, who died who departed this life on the on the 10th of December and I'm gonna try and pull it if I can 1833 aged 57 years. Yeah, there's nothing else down underneath there. I don't know why they stack them like that. It says Thomas Moyle, 1833, aged 57 years. I say I can't find the top of this one, so. It is, it was Elford by the look of it. Yes, it's falling. No, it's not falling down there. That was Elford. So whoever was married to Anne Elford Hicks. Oh, it could have been Hicks. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch. Kids have been here. I don't like coming around me here, really. I'm just... We have William Solomon, late of this borough, another innkeeper, who departed this life on the 21st of April 1835, aged 56, uh, also Looks like William. But I can't make out what that's. William. Oh, infant. Yes, hold on. Here we go. And of William, his infant son, who died 14th of November 1819, aged. 11 months. Oh, bless him. Also, Jane, his daughter, who died in 1847, aged 36 years. Ouch! And of Anne, white widow of the above. Widow, sorry, widow of the above, William Solomon. She died in 1857, aged 74, on the 2nd of February. Stupid sirens. <laughs> so that's Solomon. So you've got William Solomon, innkeeper, their infant son. Died 11 months and 
and also Jane, his daughter, who died February the 1st, 1847, age 36. Also Anne, widow of the above, died in 1857, age 74. That's Solomon. I don't know if I can get any reading off this here. Robert died at St Austell. Yeah, the top of this one's gone. And Robert, their, their son, who died at St Austell in 1856, aged 22 years. I don't think that this is the top of it here. This, is, this was a stone by the look of it. It's really worn away. Where did I see that other piece of stone? Yes, PCS. That wouldn't be it. Wife of somebody. That's just too far gone. That's a shame. That could be the top of that one actually. Anyway, we'll carry on. Somebody's been having a bit of the rubbish left here, like wine bottles, everything. I'm watching myself for needles as well. So. Here we have memory. Uh, in memory of Philip, the son of Francis and Anne Coleman. Departed this life. Gotta watch myself here. No, I can't get a date, folks. I'm not gonna put my hands down there. Not in this place anyway. I kind know of what it's like. Right, we'll have a look at a few at the back here. The thing is, they, they've taken them from, you know, they've taken, they just put them all around the edges. I don't agree with that at all. There's Richard Geek. With this borough. Died in 1848, aged 39 years. G-E-A-K-E. -E. John Bounds. Beneath this stone are the deposit, deposits. John Bounds, Jane, his wife, and Richard John Libby. Libby. L I double B E Y. Okay, and that's. Their infant son, John Bounds, died April 1839, aged 26. Jane, his wife, departed this life. Jane, his wife, the daughter of Richard, and Jane Warren, without an E, W-A-R-N. Died 4th of December 1838, aged 25. So John Bounds, Jane. John Bounds. It's full stop, sorry. Jane, his wife, and Richard John Libby, their infant son. Okay. Uh, where was it to? And RJ Libby. The son died on the 15th of December 1830, aged, what's that say, aged 
nine months. Oh, it's a shame. That's the infant son then. That's Libby. And we have a large bramble. William Hicks of this parish, of this borough. Died on March 16th, 1833, age 49. 1833, age 49, and of Sornaf, Sornaf, Sarah, Sarah, his wife. He died September 29th, 1847, aged 61. Also, of their children, Anne, who died in 1806, <coughs> Suzanne, Susanna Roberts, who died November the 13th, 1829, aged 18. And John died in 1839, aged 26. We have Marie, daughter of John Every. And Joan, John Every and Joan, his wife, the daughter of Nicholas and Amelia, Emily, Craddock. Now that's interesting because there's only one D. Craddock, who died in 1826, aged 15. Here we have John Every, who died in 1852, aged 81. And Joan Every died 5th of January 1863, aged 92. That's Every. Strange name. I mean, I suppose my name's strange. Here we have, here lies the body of Susan, wife of James Tucker, who departed this life in the 20th October 1848, aged 36, also of two infant children, their daughters. Oh, that's a shame. Thomas, the son of Thomas and Mary Pierce, this time with a C, Died 6th of February 1804, aged 8 months. Also of Louisa, their daughter, who died 12th, the 10th of August, 1817. And aged 5 months. Also Thomas, obviously the son. Died March 27th, aged 10 years, but doesn't say the year. But I would say go and buy past records, it's probably 1817 as well. With the diseases going around at this time. It's a lovely little pattern on the grave here, lovely bit of work. So that's Pierce. Here we have John Princep Burton who died in 1874, age 46. Prince John Princep, P R I N C E double P. Burton. That's what for him stepping. This is the cremations here. Stupid place to put them right up against the hedge here, really. Ah, 
Okay, here we have Climo. Sorry, Anne, the wife of Matthew Climo. C L I M O. Died in March 1847, age 82. And her great grandchildren, Elizabeth Anne Princep Burton and John and William John Burton and John Burton a tribute of affection and respect from there her daughter Margaret Burton and her nephew Joseph Sanders okay yes. Well, I'll do a few more folks and I'm going to... Right, here we have John West, son of John Wallace Coo Coom, C-O-O-M and of Nancy, his wife and George, his brother born April Oh, and they're doing the, the funny writing again. So Charles, Lily, yeah, it's foreign of some sort. Then they're Latin. Polyes et Umbra Samus. So if anybody can understand that. Here we have James Harvey. Died in this parish in 1857. Aged 79. Also of... I think that's Susanna. Widow... Widow who... Died September 1862. Aged 77. Died in Crediton. That's in Devon, her native town. Okay. Now this one, I don't know if I can read. I can't angle my phone there. Anne Clements. Anne Clements departed this life 20, 28th of January 1837, aged 74 years and of Philip Clements, son of son, their son, her son who died 31st of January 1841, age 51 also of William Trefray Truff, Truff, her brother died in 1837, age 64 so that's Clements C L E M E N C E. Okay. I'll just do the last few here if I can read them. A memory of Elizabeth Harris. Harvey, Elizabeth Harris Harvey, the much loved daughter of John and Matilda Harvey, died in this parish the 29th day of April 1829, aged six years, six years and six months, and six months. So that's related to the grave there. I don't know if we can get a good shot of that or no. I'll try. Move on to the one here. This one's got flowers on it. James Kempthorne Esquire. J. 
James Kempthorne Esquire of this town who died September 1851, age 73. Also Mary Peter, widow of the above, died in April 28th, 1856, age 76. And their beloved daughter, Mary Peter Kempthorne, died in April 1837, age 25 years. Oh, bless him. Right, folks, only a, it's quite a long video, this one, so do enjoy it and give me a subscribe and a like and all that stuff. Um, yeah, over, I remember coming over here, I, I did a video over here before, a long way back, but the wall had collapsed over there onto the graves, so I don't know what they're going to do about that. There's a few more up there, mind. There's a grave right up the top as well. That's Hawkins. Catherine Anne, beloved wife of John Krang. Don't like, like I said, I don't like the way they uh, put put the graves around the edge. What this here is then? Henry. Henry Drew. Henry Drew of St. Austell. Uh, I can't read it much. Samuel, Samuel Brewer, possibly. Died in 1858, aged 30 years. Samuel Drew. It's not a B, it is a Samuel That's Drew, yeah. Samuel Drew. M uh, Samuel Drew, Drew M A. So he could have been a vicar or something or something. Anyway, just curious to see what this one up here is buried. Didn't see this one before. It's an ornate, ornate one. But I can't get no names on it. worn away. John. And this died in this parish. I don't know, can't see it because it's all worn away. If you can make anything of it. Take a photo anyway. Right folks, I'm going to end it here. I've done all these on a previous video. Seventeenth fifty seven James Drew, lots of Drews in here. John Wendon, Elizabeth Chapel, Marianne. They don't look after these places. See, I would clean those right off there. 
there's the fence and it's got uh, see the wall come down like that I told somebody about it when it was not in that state see we'll get any readings across there here lie the mortal remains of Catherine Close Died in 1871, aged 16 years. Oh, here's one for you. Mary, the wife of James Bond. Departed this life in 1835, aged 59 years. And the one on the other side of the tree is John Mary Gatty, G-A-T-T-Y. Died in, uh, born in 1859, died in 1860. Yeah, look at the state of that. There's gravestones under there. I don't know who owns owns that, but they should, you know. It's a very old wall. Obviously, the ivy's broken it to pieces. So, anyway, folks, that's it for now. Uh, this is Bobman, St. Petrox Church. in the centre of town so it's the only one I've done for a little while they can say they're not in no this building is dangerous, no shit look at that it's gone past dangerous gravestones down there look somebody should be round here taking responsibility for all this yeah I think if you look in my earlier videos you'll see that I did come down across I was able to come down across that, but that building wasn't half as bad then. So I'll say bye for now, folks. Bobman, St. Petrox Churchyard.